Welcome back to my kitchen. Today, my name's Andrew, and I'm fresh back from fishing on the west coast of Southern California, and we're gonna wreck a vermilion. Had a great time fishing with a few buddies, and we caught several rockfish and bonito. Oh, oh. Well yeah. done, sir. Well done. Get it. Woo! Shaking bait. Okay, so sea lion's down there. Boom! Oh, nice. Smash and grab, dude. Look at that. Yeah, I got color. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Check it out. <laughs> Super epic. Woo! Today, we're going to be taking this vermilion, a prized rockfish, and I'm going to be baking it for you and showing you a very simple and yet extremely tasty way to eat this fish. So I have simply gutted the fish and I have scaled the fish as you can see right here, it's been scaled. This side hasn't for presentation purposes. So I'm gonna scale that and then we're gonna return and I'm gonna show you exactly how to prep this fish and to dress it up for an amazingly simple and yet delightful family style fish dish. If you've never dealt with fish before, all of these little half circles are scales, it's part of its protective armor. And in order to clean this so it's easy to eat, you really need to get these off. So you take the back of your knife and you just run it back up against those scales. There are scalers, there's different ways to do it. I just like using the back of my knife. Our ingredients for today are super simple and easy. We have a lemon, three small limes. You can get three big limes if you have access to them. Some green onions, some fresh root ginger, a fresh little bunch of dill, some Italian parsley, some Maldon's flake salt. We're gonna use part of this garlic and part of this red onion and a half of a cup of butter. And our star of the show, main character of this movie, the Vermilion Dollar Man. Vermilion Dollar Man! So taking a really sharp knife, I have a fillet knife, if you want to use a regular sharp kitchen knife, you can use that too. I'm going to pull the fish's front fin up. I'm just going to simply slice from there down to the spine. If you've never eaten a fish whole before, you're seriously missing out. It's an amazing way to do it. So I'm making some diagonal cuts and I'm following the angle from the head coming down past the back of the fin and the, the back plate of the gill here. So I'm creating an angle and I'm doing that three, four times back across the fish. So we're gonna do that on the other side as well. Just allows the flavor to just penetrate because we're leaving the skin on, we're not taking the skin off. Taking our red onion to start with, I'm going to slice just a few really average size rings off the end of the onion. I'm taking about half of it. If you can see here, I have a tray that I have lined with some foil. That's gonna be our baking platform. And I'm just simply going to diagonally start to break some of those onions across the tray. This is going to create a bed. Now, ultimately during the, cro the cooking process, these will you know, soften and flex down, but while it's cooking, it's going to allow the fish to almost have a breathing space underneath so that air of everything that's moving in the oven can get underneath the fish and it doesn't just steam against the bottom. So taking our lemon, I'm gonna use half of that, I'm just gonna take the end off, and then I'm gonna cut some similar size pieces of lemon, but this will help infuse flavor through the fish underneath and also will also equally be working as part of the bed that it's gonna sit on. Let's now get busy with filling the fish with infusing aromatics and flavors. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this dill. I'm gonna leave half of that. Okay, I'm gonna put that to the side for a second. I'm gonna do the same with this. Just a little bit of Italian parsley, not as much, but just enough to bring some flavor, and that can also go over here. And I'm going to take three of these. Right, so there are our green herbs and vegetables that are gonna be going in. Next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of ginger. We don't need a lot, but we need just enough. 
taking our otherwise garlic mincer, we're gonna see if we can work our ginger. And what I'm gonna do is because a lot of juice comes out of the ginger, I'm actually gonna juice the first bit over the top of the fish. And then the rest can come out here. We don't need a lot, but we're gonna want a fair bit. Taking our garlic, we're gonna pull out three to four small cloves. I wanna have some nice pungent garlic coming into this flavor. And now we're going to mince our garlic. I'm gonna take these three different herbs and I'm just going to mix them up. I'm now going to take a third of my garlic and I'm going to rub it into all of these nice slots. And then we're also gonna do some similar flavoring by pushing some ginger down in each one of these. We're gonna do the same on the other side. While this is happening, I have preheated my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit on a bake. You can expect approximately 50 minutes to an hour depending on the size of your fish. We have that all well stu stuffed in each of those slots now. And we are going to take a little bit of salt and do the same. We're going to take some butter slices and it's not a huge cavity on this fish. So I'm going to put those in there and equally while I'm doing that, I'm going to take some of this amazing herb and green onion and I'm just going to fill that into the cavity. We're gonna take a stick of butter and we're gonna stick it up the front here. And what I'll do is I'll break off a little piece of butter on each of my fingers and I'm gonna stuff that down into each of these little cut slots that we've made. So we're gonna take this fish and we are gonna simply put it right on that epic bed there. Oh. <laughs> Taking the rest of that little piece of butter, I'm gonna, this is just gonna allow it to melt and just to have that epic buttery creamy goodness. I'm gonna take some more of this red onion and I'm gonna pop it into the cavity. Finally, I'm going to take some of these amazing little limes and for the inside of the cavity, I'm gonna slice them into little quarters and I'm gonna pop them in. That is the trifecta of flavor there. For the outside, I'm going to just have a few nice slices of lime, which I'm going to place over the fish creatively, like so. And then we will anoint it for its journey into the afterlife with a good, healthy dose of Malden's flaky sea salt. Some people call this vermilion on the West Coast. Other people may know it as red snapper. Anyways, it's gonna taste great. So let's get it. Right. Oh my gosh, this smells amazing. What's the problem? It smells like fish in here. So I have my really good friend Longo here. He's from American Samoa and we've known each other for about 15 years. So I'm gonna invite him here. As you can see, this looks amazing. It smells better than I can describe to you. So Longo, why don't you come and help me test this, grab a fork, this is my friend Longo. Yeah. Hello, everybody. What's up? Okay, so help yourself. We're gonna go in. Mm. Wow, that looks so good. Let's watch out, there may be a couple little bones here and there. Oh, that's so juicy, look at that. Yeah. Wow. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Really good. It's got good flavor, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. Wow. That's tasty. That's what I like to do. So you pull it off like a little chicken wing. That's so good. But you didn't know you could do that. So I don't know what you guys are doing for the rest of the evening, but I know what Longo and I are doing. We're gonna be sitting here just smashing this out. We're gonna finish that. <laughs> yeah. So you guys have a wonderful evening. Thanks for watching. Maybe a morning or afternoon or good night. If you haven't subscribed yet, but you're enjoying content, you kind of owe us a subscription. So hey, we'd greatly appreciate a like, share, and a subscribe. 
and give us a comment and give us a recommendation on a recipe that you would like us to knock out for you. Have a wonderful day. God bless. Thanks for watching. Peace. Peace.